So check out this road positioning here from me. And not, I'm not talking left to right in my lane, I'm talking fore and aft. I'm just making sure that I'm making good decisions in relation to when I make an overtake like that. And that is classed as an overtake, of course, just because you're in a separate lane. You've just got to still pick your moments to make sure you're not left in a blind spot. You can see the guy in the mirror in this Holden Equinox, whatever it is, this SUV on the left, the white. I can see him in the mirror, so I know he can see me, if he's looking. You still can't, re you can't rely on him the fact that he's actually seen you. But I don't want to go past him until I'm my way past is clear. Again, Frogger, to there. I can see my road clear again, straight past the truck. At that point now, all the mirrors, quick lift and shoulder glance, left hand lane, unless overtaken. Now, again, I'm getting a view down the road. Ideally, on a left hand bend, you want to position yourself to the right hand side of your lane so you get a good view. Not everybody's got the correct lane discipline, all these slots, that, that truck there and him, they don't need to be here, they're not overtaking. I'm doing the speed limit and, und and actually going down the inside of them. Uh, shouldn't be doing it, but I'm also in the correct lane. And again, I'm, I've got to weigh up the risks. Should I be going to the outside lane? Well, not from here, but I also want to make progress. Now, I can see him in the mirror. He's got no intention of moving to the left-hand lane, but just in case, we're going to squirt and give him a fucking Paddington Bear hard stare. They shouldn't be there. Back to the speed limit, bimbling through. Again, I can see all the way down there, I can see caravan, left hand lane. Now I'm going to think well ahead, I'm going to get out. Look down that inside, make sure there's no passing study traffic and then down the outside, get past the truck. Local knowledge is telling me the left hand lane is shut or closing. We're down to two lanes. The lack of lane discipline from road users is appalling. They're just oblivious. They're just in their own little caffeinated world on the mobiles thinking about work, not thinking about what they're actually doing there and then, which is most important. I've now got a situation where I'm going to go to the left, middle, the middle lane again. I'm not going to go far left because of these yellow cars, for that reason. And I'm going to go left again. Left lane, unless overtaking, is ideal, not the road rule in a situation like this, because it's not actually a class of road a, a dual carriageway. Watch the blue car. I'm not sure what he's doing. He's going right out there. Now, I might have a split here. I'm just going to go to there. I knew there was going to be a good enough gap there, and there is. Just watch for pedestrians between cars. That's all right. We'll make us way to the front here, and we'll go. Always keeping the peripheral vision there, just in case any late comers again to the junction. Now, now we're not on a highway, freeway, motorway. In South Australia, it's not as frowned upon in relation to staying in the right hand lane. And on a motorbike, we're talking about the differences in lane discipline there. On a motorbike, you want the best view of the road. The best view of junctions as you're approaching. If you're out here, you've got a better ch chance of seeing and being seen. Now this little echo is going steady. Just be aware that they might suddenly want to overtake. And I'm going to go past this truck now, make sure that it's safe to do so and get ever squirt. Right, slow moving traffic. The urge, of course, is to always try and get through the green light as quick as you can. I'll get it, get there before it goes to red, but you're on a motorbike, you can't just accelerate into junctions like that. You've got to cover 
the fact that there could be emergency service vehicles coming through you've got to cover the fact that there could be a dozy bastard on his mobile phone or her mobile phone coming through on a red so you can't accelerate through you've got to just cover every option nice Z900 they're lovely aren't they now quick shoulder not to make sure he's not coming in I'm going to have a look down this gap and I'm going to use it a little bit bit of lane splitting again pedestrians poking the noses out in South Australia we can do 30 k's an hour down the middle of these gaps here if you've got enough gap as you can see I have just a nice bimble and what I'm doing there is just feathering the back brake all the way through using the clutch at this point I'm going to do that this is a great tool on this bike as the cars start moving I will have that gap there and then we'll flip the mirror back out grab a second and move on watching for any lane changes and notice my position here now about position 5 as you'd call it if you split your lane into 1 to 5 watching this white high air coming towards me there's a lot of them ok big trucks turning right blue old blue cameras staying in this lane I'm just going to back off a little bit see if I get a, a big enough gap in the middle to to lane split I do, I've got a cyclist coming from my right to left I think I'm safe at the moment to grab a neutral for a second have a little stretch off looking at the sequence of lights we're safe 